Hi guys, it's Omega, and I'm coming on today to share a little something with you um, in the sewing side of things. I had mentioned in my last video, I think I shared with you all the um, presser feet that I had purchased to um, you know, use with my sewing. So today what I'm going to share with you is something that I'm making for my sewing room. And I'll explain this here in just a moment. But um, I'm in the process. It's kind of a slow process because once I moved here, um, I didn't really unpack my sewing stuff um, totally. I did set things in this other spare bedroom, but never really unpacked anything. So I've been unpacking and trying to kind of pull out only the essential things that I need to sew. Um, I really, I had a dedicated sewing room. If you'll notice from when I first started on YouTube, I did put a video up sharing my sewing space. Um, that's one of my first few videos that I did. So if you want to see what that sewing room looked like, you can check out that video. That would have been back a few years. So it's, you know, back towards the beginning. But here I don't have a dedicated space. The space that I'm using is um, a, a spare bedroom, but it has a sofa, a sofa, pull out sofa bed in it. And so that's taking up some space that I would be using um, otherwise. But I will share with you all how the sewing room will look and function um, the way it is here. I, I'll share that with you once I get things a little more situated. But what I'm doing today, guys, is I was going through some of my stuff and what I found was my collection of thimbles. This is my thimble collection that I have so far. Um, and then I have a couple little, let's see here, these are like lapel pins, these little sewing machines that I had gotten, I think when I was in the um, Maryland um, Sewing Association, I can't even remember the name of it now because it's been so many years, but um, you know, it's an association, and I'll find out the name of it and put the link below because I do want to join um, here. I think it's in every state. But back to the uh, thimbles here. Um, I have a collection of thimbles that I've purchased in various places that I've been, but what started this collection, I'm going to share with you the two thimbles that started this collection are these. These are very um, sentimental for me uh, because hopefully I can tell you about this without even getting teary but so these thimbles were given to me by my brother who is now deceased it was my younger brother and so before I even had all of these he and his wife had gone to Israel on a trip with the church and um, I didn't get to take that trip with them at the time and I totally regret that now because it was because of work that I wasn't able to go and um, now he's not around to be able to do that with but when he was there he found these thimbles and the funny thing is if you'll notice this little thimble actually fits inside of the other one and when he presented it to me he actually gave it to me as one thimble I don't think he even knew this one was kind of stuck in there and I don't think he even knew that that smaller thimble was actually in there because he gave it to me as if this was one thimble it was in a little box and uh, it was just the one thimble showing and then I discovered that this thimble was inside and at the time like I said it was kind of stuck in there but it pulls out, but they're beautiful thimbles from Israel when they went there uh, to visit. And just knowing that he thought about me when he saw them is what makes these so, so special. And even though I had been sewing for years and years, I had never started a thimble collection, even though I knew there you know, were thimbles you could collect. 
I never started a collection, but these spurred me to kind of look for thimbles anywhere I, anywhere I travel, you know, somewhere different or whatever. And so these are beautiful thimbles that he bought back from Israel, and thus my thimble collection began. Now this particular one, if you'll notice, this one, and I'm going to see if I can put it up close enough for you to see, it's like a stained glass. If you can see, that's an opaque, there's what it looks like design on the outside, and it's, you can see through it. It's a like a stained glass. This one is solid, um, but both very pretty. Those are what started my collection. And then, and I'll show you these thimbles when I get ready to display them. Um, each of them come from somewhere different. Not, not all of them. Actually, one set of these are a collection from New York. And then I got a few of the others from a few places. I haven't traveled all that much, but a few places that have been very special trips for me. But I wanted to display them in a way that they really pop and stand out. And the other thing about this little box is um, I can probably put two on a shelf once my collection grows. So I'll have plenty of room here for this collection to really grow. This is not completely finished, and I'm going to finish it here with you all today. Um, what I'm going to do, and then let me tell you first of all how I got the box, because... I was looking and looking and looking for something to put the thimbles in and I saw a few collectible um, boxes online that, that are nice and, and I may eventually get one of those, but I just wanted something really quick. I wanted something where I could, you know, put up in my room right away and I wanted them to really pop against the background. Now this box is not very deep and the way the box started out was I was looking and looking. I went in Joann's uh, one day last week and the, this was on the clearance rack. And let me show you another box that's very similar but not quite as large but it has larger spaces. Now this box had letters of the alphabet, wooden letters. and I thought about the fact that I was like, huh, I'll get the box. I don't need the letters. I just want the box. But I thought of something to do with the letters. Now, this box I will also use. I'm going to also paint this. And what I did was spray paint it, this box with a matte uh, spray paint. And then what I'm going to do is trim the box in gold, the edges here in gold. And I have some little corners that I'm going to put in the uh, on the edges of the box. And as you can see, I already painted one of them gold. And when I'm done with everything, I'm going to spray paint it with this clear acrylic sealer just to make sure it's durable. But the way I got the box, it had letters in it, like this box has these numbers in it. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these numbers at this point, but um, I have numbers in, in this box. I am going to use this box the same way, but what I'm going to do with this box is actually, as you can see, they're fairly good size. Let me see if I can tell you what size the insides of the box, each section. It's just about four... Let's see on the inside. It's about four inches deep and two and a quarter inches wide. So each section is four by two and a quarter. That's a, a very nice size. I can use it either way, this way or this way. But what I'm going to be looking for for this box is sewing, you know, the iconic um, sewing things that you see, the collectibles. Like, um, I do have a pair of really cute um, embroidery scissors that will look pretty in this box. I, I'm going to look for, you know, those iconic sewing things um, to collect and put in this box along with my thimbles. So back to the thimbles. 
these are, oh, sorry, two and one eighth inch square. That's what these, each of these little squares are. And there's 24 squares. I have less than 24 thimbles, so each thimble will get its own space. And then I'll put my little sewing machine um, on one of the shelves. So what I'm going to do here, I did kind of, before I started spray painting it, I just tested the back. But I wanted to see if that gold would adhere to that well. This is one of the Deco Color Premium Gold um, Felt Tip Pens. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to shake this up really good. And I'm just going to go around the edge of the box. And then I'm going to paint my corner pieces and put one of the corner pieces in each corner just to give it an extra little uh, flare. And that will just, I think it will be perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect for this little box. I just wanted something fairly simple, but I wanted it to really pop. And as you'll see here, Try to be careful here to not make a mess. But as you can see, that gold just pops beautifully. Now these are cheap little boxes, but I kind of like the fact that it's just very plain. Um, I'm going to go around the edge here. This stuff also dries very quickly. So I'll be able to finish this up and let it dry. Then put my corner pieces on and it will be done. Then finally what I'm going to do is seal it with the acrylic sealer. So I'm going to finish up around the edges of my box and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm done trimming around the edges with the gold and I love how that turned out. It dries really quickly but it's still slightly damp and then I see a couple little splinters a couple of places. I'm going to have to make sure I can get rid of those. And it really looks cute. So that part is done. Now I'm going to paint the little corners, the corner pieces that I had here. They're metal. And they're called metal stickers. They have the little um, pop dots on the back. I'm just pulling those off. I don't need those at all. And I'm going to use my tweezers to kind of hold that in place. I think I'm going to use a piece of cardboard too. Oop, getting gold paint all over my fingers. So while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint um, these corner pieces. I do want to get on all sides of the pieces as much as possible. So my little embellishment pieces are dry. They came out very pretty. And I have one of them on. Now it doesn't really make a huge statement, but the box isn't that big. And with each corner 
I, I think that's going to be just enough. So I'm putting the corners on. Let me go with this corner. This here had a little split, but um, I think it's going to be okay. Just going to put the glue on the box. Lay my embellishment piece on. And simply let it dry. So I have the last two to put on each side. And this box will be done and then um, I, I plan on working in my sewing room a little bit today I want to kind of plan out some projects I would love to um, get some sewing done in the next couple weekends so um, I plan on doing that uh, this little hanger was on the box it was a piece of plastic I just painted it black went ahead and left it there so that will um, hang my box will hang from that for now. So that is the box at this point. Each corner has the little embellishment. And I am going to let it dry, hang it up, and then show you what it looks like with the thimbles in the box. I'll be back. Okay guys, I finally got my box up in my sewing room, my little shadow box that I made. And as I mentioned, they were, um, this box was filled with letters, um, initially wooden letters. And I am going to use the letters. I decided something that I'm going to make uh, for the letters and I'll show you that whenever I get that done. But this was perfect, I mean absolutely perfect to put my collection in for now and I don't have a, a huge collection but I started the collection after getting these two initial thimbles those two there those are the ones that, are, that was from my uh, younger brother who is now deceased so these really mean a lot to me very sentimental um, he bought those back to me from Israel when him and his wife went on a trip with the church and um, I treasured them and the fact that they inspired me to begin my thimble collection so that started it and then I have this one is an Obama thimble and this one is from DC so at some point going down to DC, probably with friends to take a tour, I, I found those thimbles in a souvenir shop and got those. And uh, this one is from the Luray Caverns in Virginia. This is a beautiful area that has um, caves that you go down underground. I, I believe they're mostly underground. Um, I do have a few there from trips uh, one from a cruise, a few of them from a cruise. These four here went to the Bahamas with uh, one of my girlfriends and um, the this one is from the Bahamas, that one's from South Beach and then those two are from the Kirks Islands um, from that cruise. I think we ported at one of the Kirks and Caicos Islands. And then I have one from North Carolina from when I visited a friend um, in North Carolina. And that was actually years ago before I moved to the Carolinas. Um, then I have those four, those four there. Those are from Hawaii. Um, visited the Dole Plantation and then also visited, this one is from um uh, Pearl Harbor and that was a very very touching um, 
trip or tour that we were able to take and then the other two just from gift shops in Hawaii. So I went to Hawaii as a result of winning the trip. I actually won a raffle where uh, my my job was raffling off trips to Hawaii for I think it was three or four consecutive years and I won one of the last trips that they raffled off and boy that was so exciting and I took my son with me um, on that trip so that was like a trip of the life of a lifetime I really really enjoyed and then the rest of them are all actually from here and the top row those are all actually from New York, various places in New York. One is the Brooklyn Bridge, um, Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, um, the South, I think it's called the South Seaport or something like that. Um, the Chrysler Building, then uh, let's see what else. Brooklyn Bridge and, oh, the Empire State Building. So those are all from New York. I don't think I got them all at one time. I used to go to New York frequently and uh, either taking friends up to visit. New York from where I lived in Maryland was only a four hour drive. So it was always a fun, fun uh, thing to do. And that was the place that I just loved to visit the garment district where there was like just tons and tons of fabric places. and. Let me tell you, a lot of the fabric I have came from New York, going up there on, you know, just little day trips and whatnot. So that is my collection at this point. Um, I will probably switch that box out at some point to get a nicer case to put the bobbins, or bobbins, they're not bobbins, I always want to say bobbins, but put the thimbles in. And what I'm going to do is um, I'll probably use that to either expand my collection or, or whatever. But I wanted to do something right away to get my bobbins up on display. I used to have them on a shelf that I had and um, I just think this is a much nicer display. So I just wanted to come on today and share this with you guys. I am really pleased how it turned out and um, I am just in my sewing room now trying to kind of get it ready to actually sew so keep watching guys um like i said i'm not giving up my paper crafting i will always still have that as something i'll uh you know do frequently so i'll still be doing videos on my paper crafting but i'm gonna add in my sewing here and there so keep watching guys. I'll be back soon, probably just to give you a little tour of what this room turned out like. This space is not just going to be for sewing. It's also my guest room. Um, I have a pull-out couch in here, so I need to kind of situate it so I can, um, you know, I, I just have not unpacked everything. So I'm pulling out my essential things that I need and just trying to get it situated. So I'll let you know, I'll uh, you know do a video tour of the room when I'm done and ready to actually start sewing. So thanks guys for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye.